Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradi, and here at the Dubai Air Show, where our coverage is sponsored by Leonardo DRS. And we're here at the Leonardo Chalet to talk to Laurent Sisman, who is the Senior Vice President for Unmanned Systems uh, at the company, reporting directly to Alessandro Profumo, uh, the Chief Executive. Laurent, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Very glad to be here, Vago. Uh, absolute pleasure. And, uh, you know, it's always great to be uh, at a press conference that is really something novel and new. And you guys unveiled the Sky Dweller concept, uh, which is your effort at doing an ultra long range, extremely high endurance, medium altitude, solar powered aircraft. Uh, an extraordinary capability. You're using the solar impulse uh, as a starting point for that, which was the record setting solar powered airplane that in 2015 went around the world. Talk to us a little bit about the program, the industrial team, and what you hope to accomplish and why it's so important, both militarily, but especially commercially. So the idea behind this is to get a perpetual drone made out of uh, all the legacy and leveraging on all the technology and investment that has been made uh, in Solar Impulse by the Solar Impulse Foundation, which was about able to raise over the last 15 years more than $190 million. So we start from there and we get a very good startup uh, made out of uh, experts in uh, the drones um, industry uh, from uh, from the US, uh, from the US top industries uh, as Nostrop Grumman, that are basically starting and starting uh, a startup. We've got a very good team uh, of uh, American specialists in terms of uh, drones technologies that have decided to m transform the solar impulse into a drone. Uh, this is uh, a huge opportunity because it is a drone that if you if the aircraft if you take out of the aircraft the pilot the survival kit and all the materials that are dedicated to uh, carrying a human then you add the the the, the weight for the some equipments to make it a drone you get room for a 800 pounds 400 kilos payload that can be carried out uh, by the aircraft perpetually so basically the idea is to fly for 90 days and then go back into the ground for uh, revisioning uh, the, the aircraft because you have done more than 2,000 hours which is a, a huge amount for an aircraft uh, usually usually speaking so we have to revise the components because we don't find components that have longer life so that's why we have 90 days missions but this is virtually perpetual you could stay as much as you want in terms of power the aircraft base uh, climbs during the day, loads the batteries, and uh, uh, during the night uh, glides down and unloads the batteries with the props. Now you have room for uh, two, two kilowatts of payloads, which means that you can use a variety of payloads and you can take the most advantage of the 400 kilos of payloads that you're using. And with a good management of the power, uh, you, you're really able to do a, a, a versatile series of missions. You, uh, you can carry uh, a radar, you can carry electro-optics, you can carry telecoms, you can carry siege in comment, which is, which is, which is huge. Um, and if you uh, look at it, right, right now we use a multiplicity of different unmanned systems, uh, right? We'll, we will need four or five of them in order, even with their one-day endurance, to be over a battle space, whereas what you're saying, with several of these systems, you can actually cover a vast area almost as uh, a geostationary satellite almost. Yes, it's exactly this. The idea here is to not have a, a forward advanced base. So you can send this aircraft from Europe to uh, Seattle, uh, command it from Europe, and have it there in, uh, in, the, in the Seattle for as long as you want, basically, without having to make any rotation with an aircraft that travels, an aircraft that does the mission, or an aircraft that flies uh, to replace the one that is on mission and one in the overall and refueling and everything. So this is uh, really versatile and you save a lot of money because you don't have the advanced base and you don't have uh, this variety of assets that are flying for one that does the mission. So yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, an incredibly higher efficiency process than the usual ISR process, uh, and, uh, and that works well. Um, uh, talk to us a little bit about um, some of the technology and what you're upgrading. The solar cells now are uh, dramatically uh, better. You have, what, about 2,900 square feet of uh, solar, solar uh, cells on the, on the wings. Six engines, if I'm correct, six, six motors? Uh, I think it's four. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, I, I apologize. Uh, and. The battery technology is also improving, and this is just a demonstrator for the capability. Talk to us about where you are on the program and what the sort of Gen 1 version of this that you're going to field is going to look like and the capabilities it's going to have. So the process is incredible uh, for, for Leonardo working with a startup. What we're doing is that we have a flying test bed 
from day one. So what happens is that we will put together back the aircraft, we will make it fly as a manned version, and we will put uh, our energy in the first months, so it will fly manned in March or April next year, and three to four months later, uh, we will be able to embed into it our software, or Skydweather software, uh, to make it optionally piloted. Uh, that will allow us to make all the flight test campaign and all the software validation with the safety pilot on board and to mature the software to get at the end of the process with uh, a fully matured uh, software package that will be able to go on board the real industrial sky dweller variant that we are developing in parallel on the airframe and on the basis of solar impulse. So the process is solar impulse, put it back together, fly it managed, fly it optionally piloted, qualify the software, in parallel develop the drone on the same kind of architecture and beg, embed into the drone the software that was developed through the flying uh, operations. Um, but talk about the robustness of the airplane, right? Solar Impulse was designed, it's extremely light, it's extremely fragile. There was a whole bunch of concerns about very bad weather that delayed uh, flights. Uh, there was a long repair down cycle there was because there was um, damage to the airplane. At one point, I think it was the Trans-Pacific flight that they wanted to do in five days, not 10 days, so they had to wait for weather yep. for the right kind of tailwind. Military and commercial customers aren't going to be that picky. You're going to have to fly this in bad weather, in strong winds, in uh, you know, uh, cold. I know you guys are looking at a whole dump bunch of de-icing technologies. What is that production version going to be like? How much more robust is it going to be? How much more like a regular airplane will it be for your customers? Okay, so it will be it will be an industrialized product. So it's not more a demonstrator. It's not more prototype. Meaning that if you miss, a, uh, if you've got a, a part to repair, you've got a part that can be stored. You've got a logistic process in place. So it's 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 a it's a company program. It's a Skydware company program backed up by Leonardo and has to respect all the logistic support issues that we usually have. So the, uh, we we have no issues about that. Uh, the question about uh, the endurance and the batteries and the solar cells, uh, they are going. To to evolve over time again and again and what we get is a benefit as uh, Skydware to be able to uh, replace them in three years, in five years, in ten years with the always latest generation that will enable us to get always more power or lower rate, so more power from the cells, from the solar cells and lower weight from the batteries or more energy stored to, to, be, able to, be, to be able to be even more versatile in the missions that we do. So uh, that's, uh, that's a bit the way we, we will get the progress through the um, electric energy management there and uh, the, inc the increase of performance. Then, sorry, can you repeat uh, if you had another bit of the question and, that I missed? And, uh, you know, I, well, I mean, the, the fundamental question was how supportable an airplane is this going to be? And you're saying you're going to make that a very, very industrial process, a very industrial program, bringing the skills you do as Leonardo as a, as a global airplane maker. Well, the weather, you asked me about the weather. So the oh, idea here right. is that, I mean, this aircraft is uh, bit slower but not more fragile than uh, other uh, unmanned systems today used uh, by the by the by the, um, the armies or the forces the air forces so uh, the the big thing here is about making sure that we manage the mission according to the weather so you don't want to go voluntarily into the bad weather uh, but we can afford to avoid it very very easily because we are perpetual so we can take uh, more hours to go and to avoid the weather and we will have a continuous mission planning system that will allow us to check whether the mission that we're doing is effective and is good and is not going into bad weather for the next six hours and we'll get a slight replanning continuously from where we will operate the drone or whoever will operate the drone will do it. And uh, unli unlimited uh fuel certainly gives you a certain advantage uh, because you're not going to be running out of gas and crashing somewhere. Um, let me go to uh, the business case as well as uh, the financial partnership or, or rather the industrial partnership you've, you've created. What's the market size for this? Because you're looking at commercial applications from ground mapping to a whole bunch of commercial uh, applications. Uh, talk to us about what the size of this market is, military and commercial. And then talk to us a little bit about the industrial team you guys have put together and the kind of financial backing that is coming to, to the organization from Leonardo, but also from your uh, investment partners. Yeah. So the size of the market is, uh, is huge. If we look only at uh, military, it's, uh, it will be to our opinion, a consistent size, a consistent slice of uh, the overall ISR market. So 
several hundred of millions in the next years, uh, we believe, is what is capturable by a product like Skydwear, especially because it's so ahead of any competition in terms of solar uh, aircraft, in terms of payload, in terms of versatility and robustness, that we really believe that uh, we, we it will, it will take a, a consequent slice of this market. Then the commercial market is all to be created because uh, uh, as of today, what has been uh, available down there uh, was not persistent enough or was not able to carry payloads heavy enough to be able to provide a real commercial service. Now Skydware is a game changer in that and will really be able to open a civil perspective into the market and, and there we, we talk about potentially billions of dollars in terms of telecommunication relay, in terms of going to uh, disaster area, in terms of uh, going to bad infrastructure areas and to provide a 5G communication, the data relay, and, and also geo-information mapping, tracking, and so on and so forth. So the, the market is potentially very big. With regards to um, the industrial setup that we have, uh, we actually wanted to make uh, the startup working as a startup. It's not like Leonardo overwhelming a startup. It's uh, Leonardo and the startup working together and bringing the best of the capabilities. We want the startup to be able to concentrate on the aircraft. We want, as Leonardo, to be able to learn as much as possible in two things. These new technologies, which for us are key for the aviation of the future, electrification, uh, ultralight materials, uh, batteries, uh, power management, and so on and so forth. Uh, but also, we want to learn the startup way of doing. I mean, we are a big company and we want to be very close to a startup, but we won't do work for the startup from Leonardo. We will bring into the startup uh, a series of people that will be embedded directly into the team, experts, senior people, more junior people, just to make sure that at the end of the development process, these people can go back into Leonardo and have a technical baggage, but also a very strong and concrete startup way of doing uh, knowledge that they can bring back into the company and helping us to carry on transforming the company in always a modern, more modern company. So that's a bit the setup that, uh, that we've envisioned with, uh, with Skydware. We've been working on um, a collaboration agreement very strongly together for many, many months prior to close investment. We've got this collaboration agreement that allows us uh, to provide to Skydware some services, that allows us also to get some uh, help from Skydware. If tomorrow we want to test the payload of our development from our electronics division into Skydware for a uh, three months mission, then we can do it. We can find this kind of agreements. Uh, and um, that's it, that's about, that's about the way we work. And, uh, and uh, the uh, team is based we're in the United States, and you guys also want it ITAR free, which is very important. So talk to us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So uh, the team and the company is American, but the operation center to start with is based in Madrid. Why Madrid? Because it's where we can develop a, a green aircraft that is ITAR free, and that can be then uh, customized for the needs of every customer with their own uh, secrecy and, uh, and um, sensitive payloads or coding. And on the other way, uh, because in Madrid, uh, there, are, th there is all the people that worked uh, from Altran into the solar impulse that are there available from Altran that is also an investor in the program uh, and that we will be able to uh, use uh, to capture all the knowledge that they had developed in solar impulse and carry on bridging and building on it, not have to develop again everything from scratch. So Madrid is the reason for this, for these two reasons, ITA free and knowledge. Uh, Skydra was also able to raise some um, uh, public funding there in, uh, in Spain, so that's, that's all good. Luan Sisman, uh, the Senior Vice President for Unmanned Systems at Leonardo, absolutely uh, fascinating. Wish you uh, the best Thank of luck. Know. And uh, again, the first flight is? Next spring. Next spring, so you guys are hard at work uh, already and uh, look forward to covering it and having updates with you because it's an extraordinary kind of capability that's very, very game changing. So 50 people already working on it full steam since the closing two months ago. All engineers, <laughs> very qualified. Bon courage. Merci.